town of Dickinson, North Dakota, changes are beginning to take shape through three dynamic individuals. Outside in Ruby and Stiegelmeyer's Orchard, a remarkable story of connection through confection is unfolding. Using ingredients like choke cherries is amazing because people who eat truffles that I make who are from North Dakota immediately recognize the flavor and feel that I'm making something special for them with something from home. Ruby is a passionate chocolatier working with the Change Network, a transformative program for aspiring leaders, gaining the skills and connections needed to drive positive change while fostering inclusivity and equity. So chocolate's one of my passions because almost everybody loves chocolate. Ruby doesn't just create chocolates. She crafts experiences that connect people to the past through the sweet medium of cocoa. For Ruby, working with chocolate is akin to wielding a set of paintbrushes or a palette. Each creation is a unique masterpiece, combining different ingredients to evoke emotions and memories. But her mission goes beyond crafting delectable treats. Ruby's chocolates are a gateway to history, a means to connect people to the stories, struggles, and triumphs of the past. But this one's a little bit different than, say, um, a gourmet food service um, chef's table, where mine is actually paired with a story. There's a box of little items where you're gonna help me tell the story as well. So if you don't mind volunteering, when I ask for a volunteer, so when you're tasting something, you're actually creating a permanent memory. Ruby's project aims to correct historical narratives and broaden perspectives. She seeks to shine a light on the unsung heroes of the past, like Margaret Roberts, a single mother who faced adversity, but remains largely forgotten by history. Next time I think of Theodore Roosevelt, I'm also gonna think of Margaret Roberts because She's a hero just like he was, and she's also extremely relatable. They lived at the same time, next to each other, showing the same qualities and going through the same experiences that made Theodore Roosevelt famous to this day, and she's nearly forgotten. So that's the story that I'm telling with Chocolates with my Change Network project, just so that I can hopefully start to shift that lens one degree. As Ruby moves forward, she envisions collaborating with local museums and communities, further weaving history into her chocolates. She found a friend and a supporter in Tara Zettel, who was beginning her own journey with the Change Network. Tara is a dedicated nurse and the director of Connect Medical Clinic in Dickinson, she recently took a leap of faith that would become the catalyst for a profound personal and communal growth. Emily, Eli, you can come on back. The journey that began with curiosity would soon evolve into a heartfelt mission to empower women and revolutionize the local healthcare landscape. All right, how are you? Good, good. good. how's Theo doing? Good. Excellent, excellent. Well, I've been working in sexual health for 12 years now and and it is it's a privilege because it is so private it is it is stuff that you don't talk to your mom about right. do you have any questions about your charting from from your last cycle Emily so uh, I was postpartum because there's already enough hormones <laughs> people deserve a safe space to talk about their their sex lives and their health because sexual health is health for Tara the Change Network is providing support to help her break down the barrier of embarrassment. I am a fertility awareness um, instructor, so I teach women how to, to recognize the signs of ovulation and track their cycle, not just bleeding, but track their cycle and their hormone levels throughout their whole cycle, because ovulation is a fifth vital sign for women. It's an indicator of health. I've really become very passionate about cycle health for, for young people, puberty to menopause. We also have a parenting and pregnancy education program, um, young couples from the time they're, they find out they're pregnant all the way through uh, two years of age. 
can come and watch videos and meet with a nurse and ask all their questions and get all their questions answered and they get a pack of diapers and a pack of wipes for every lesson that they complete. The clinic now has a 100% referral rate, spurring exponential growth. Something exciting is happening next door. We are going to knock down some walls and expand this 1,200 square feet into a 3,200 square foot clinic with five exam rooms and space for all of the staff, a space to add staff. It's a place for everybody, for our team to grow and to really meet the needs that we've been seeing. Our patient have been growing exponentially over the last two or three years. The Change Network has impacted me in ways I would have never seen coming. If only to give me the knowledge and the tools and the confidence to take a step back and look at the other person's perspective. Just a few blocks away, there lives a passionate luminary whose voyage through the Change Network invites a creative fire, leaving an indelible mark on the people of Dickinson. I have some pieces in here so that are great examples of some of the things I do. Janelle Stone King is an educator that uses her artistic talents to try and make the world a better place than it was yesterday. This is a piece that's in progress. I'm not quite done yet, but this is truly like my style that I've, I've really grown to love and taking newspapers and the headlines to tell a story. And this piece is called Resilience and about our resilient children. And this is my son Jackson and he's like, it's fine, I'm fine. <laughs> like... With a multitude of projects close to her heart, Janelle found herself at a crossroads, uncertain if she could give her limited time to the Change Network. It's just funny to think about the opportunities that would have been lost if I hadn't. So now, if there's others who had even considered the Change Network, I'm like, just do it, it's fine. <laughs> I know it's a, it is a bit of a time commitment, but what a person gains is so much more valuable. It's worth every moment. Janelle's project evolved when she saw unmet needs in the community and decided to blend arts with mental health support. There are youth who are not involved in extracurricular activities and maybe who just need different opportunities. And so that's when I decided I wanted to do overnight lock-ins for those high schoolers. And taking the arts and creativity and incorporating that into mental health, just to help them see that it doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be a difficult conversation when we can do it through creative activities. These were 12-hour lock-ins. So it was a big feat that we had to accomplish. We also had different stations, and that actually the title for it was Illumination Stations. We were creating light in the darkness. We were deliberate in who was invited in some, in some regards. We had students from our public school. We had students from private schools. We had a homeschool student. We had students from our peer-to-peer -peer group where um, there are mentors paired with folks with disabilities. And so the population of students was very diverse that was there. Because people tend to isolate themselves through technology, Janelle feels it is important to create opportunities in ways that young people feel they are being listened to. They just really wanted adults there who were interested in them, who wanted to talk with them, and just lift them up for what they were doing and what their gifts were. And it was evident that we have to keep doing work like this. The art created during these events gave students a voice to express complex emotions and fostered empathy and understanding. One thing I know is that we are all unified in how we feel. Like these emotions are what connect us. And for those students, I wanted them to see those connecting points because oftentimes it's easy for them to see what makes each you know different people different but I wanted to really bring them together in a way where they could see like okay we have a lot in common a lot more in common than I than I really thought about on a cool summer evening Janelle Tara 
Ruby Ann gather with a group of new friends, like-minded leaders dedicated to positive change in their community. We have this momentum building in our community that we have this network of people who are starting to become change network agents in a true community changing way. I love being with other people who have similar ideas and we can sharpen each other. The Change Network was a really great way for me to talk about my idea in a space full of people who wanted to see me actually do what I had imagined. We're in uncharted territory and it's exciting, but it's daunting too. It's like we're developing our own community within our community of these people who have this mindfulness about creative change and that's exciting because imagine what we can do. Imagine the Change Network people that we'll have in five more years to join our crew. <laughs> We're just gonna keep feeding all these great people to the North Dakota Change Network so our community gets more strengthened as we go.